Petra Kucha 313, uh, Batman The Dark Designs, I think I've reread this Iron Man comic book. Uh, these are things I picked up from my local library. Um, COVID restrictions have relaxed enough that you can actually walk through the front door these days, so I thought I'd give that a shot. Uh, the funny thing about the Iron Man book is I was thinking about something from this book, but as I was flipping through it in the library to check if I'd read it or not, um, none of the plot points actually stuck with me. It was just this one thing where Iron Man basically is in a fight with a bad guy, shoots him in the chest, gives him a heart attack, and then resuscitates him using the Iron Man suit. Uh, Captain America <laughs> thinks this constitutes uh, a very questionable moral grey area, calls him out on it. This is the only thing in the book that I, I re recalled. And if this if this book if this bit wasn't in the book, I wouldn't actually remember anything about the book because I didn't the last time. What is the plot? Iron Man is basically programmed to assassinate a bunch of people, and only halfway through the book does he realize this is happening. This is a result of him having, um, you know, nano machines basically, which means that it's not just that the suit was being programmed; he was being programmed, and he didn't realize. This Iron Man book makes every Avenger in it, which includes Wolverine, Spider-Man, Captain America, it makes them all look like idiots so that Iron Man by himself can come in and save the day. Um, it's something that you typically see done in a book that is about one character, not a team book. Uh, and it turns out the mastermind behind um, all of Tony Stark's problems is some guy they try to retroactively introduce to his past. It's a, it's a pretty common thing that you'll see in narrative i forgot this book before i'm sure i'll forget it again so i can't really comment on it one way or the other their dark designs are something that might stick with me a bit longer but might not stay in the canon as long um written basically a couple of years ago it's i think james tinney and the fourth's attempt to stamp stamp his name in some kind of legacy piece for batman very well written very well drawn it's a thick book um, it's about what Batman does and it's about what Bruce Wayne is. It's it's a real pleasure to read and towards the end it really started to click for me. Uh, the problem is that it's so ambitious and nakedly ambitious that it does too much too fast and is what I would call postmodern hotshotting. There's a bit where Batman literally takes something off his belt that he doesn't know he has, puts it on a car and it magically turns it into a Batmobile um, because... The technology he has access to is so advanced, it, I would say at this point, it constitutes magic. His bat, his uh, utility belt is now just plot armor as well as his actual plot armor. Uh, one of the many things I look like about this book is the Penguin. Uh, he's he's like a combination of like the 1960s Adam West ba uh, Batman Penguin and the ruthlessness of Danny DeVito's. And I like how he's drawn with sharp teeth. This book also plays uh, into nostalgia, uh, referencing legacy versions of certain characters as a part of the convoluted plot that involves a bunch of the most notorious villains taking uh, their cue from a villain we've never heard of before, who secretly was the greatest villain ever and then mysteriously vanished. Uh, another instance of a writer retroactively adding someone to the canon to make this brand new character seem like they were always there. And it really doesn't work when the guy wears cargo pants with a cape. Um, again, I'm, I'm big on this, but I'll call it when I see it when it's not quite working. This is also the story, I think, that introduced Harley Quinn's replacement punchline. And I think the only thing in this entire story that won't be retconned in the next... Well, no, by the end of either this year or next year, because I think DC are currently retconning their universe, is Harley Quinn b being more of a good guy than a bad guy. She sides with Catwoman to help her help Batman, who she's in a relationship with. I also saw Rambo 4, which I've seen before this week. I like that it takes itself seriously. It's very rare for me to see an action movie that's so violent it actually registers. Uh, it's not Stallone's good at doing what he does, and what he does is do things he's good at, so I, I couldn't rate it higher. Well, I could if it was the original Rambo movie. I also, because I went to the library, took out an actual book. I was going to pick up Frankenstein, couldn't find it. Uh, saw a H.P. Lovecraft collection just in my face as I turned to leave. 
surprisingly, um, the first story I read was something I read in the other book I read that was about H.P. Lovecraft. The introduction was um, interesting in that it directly linked H.P. Lovecraft's work to some of my famous, some of my most uh, uh, favorite and some of the most famous writers I've heard of, like Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Stephen King, Clive Barker. Um, having read the first H.P. Lovecraft story, which was maybe three, four, five pages, I did a little illustration based on what I thought were the key visual motifs as best I understood them. Um, which I think is something I'm going to do as I go through this book, just a little sketch to make it a bit more visually interesting um, if I choose to even talk about the stories, which is usually just the premise straight into the plot twist. Uh, I did another kind of cheap lazy bison, <laughs> but it didn't help me save time to do more of my actual my book because I'm really just trying to not do it as much as I can because it's scaring me so much. Uh, it's getting far too close to being a real thing. So I'm this week all I did was like a dinner scene uh, in a feudal Japanese castle. And then it occurred to me I have no idea what they would be eating with, what 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 if they'd have individual settings, uh, table settings, if they'd even have a table, what height it would be. Japanese culture is not my culture. I googled it uh, and got some information, I think, which was good enough for me to ballpark it but these are the little things that make it very easy for me to just want to tap out on this thing entirely uh, but I'm going to try and see if I can't pick up some uh, momentum you know honestly reading a book like that Batman uh, seeing people actually trying to do something even though it's not really good for much outside of you know it's it's, it's like watching a, a blockbuster movie it's great when you're in the cinema and I've seen tons of movies like this but it it, it can't stick with you because in two years time someone's going to release a movie with the same bloody name and now it's going to complicate you even googling things funny I should mention Rambo in the same week as I say something like that but that's the end of Pecha Kucha 313 and I'll see you next time